Thanks for tuning in at Brackies. Hello everyone and welcome to the fourth episode in Going 2D. Today we will be taking a look at making our ball and make it jump around the screen. So, uh, but before we go ahead and get started, I just want to quickly plug a couple of wallpapers I've made. You can see the first one on uh, my desktop here and then also just a Brackies logo wallpaper. A lot of pe people requested me to make some, some wallpapers, so I so thought I would go ahead and do it. Uh, so you can get them at brackies.com slash wallpapers. That's a secret URL, so just type it directly in there and you can download the zip file in HD. Cool. So let's always, uh, as always, open up Unity. And uh, what we're going to go ahead and do first is we're going to import the sprite uh, that will uh, be our ball. So if I just quickly minimize this, go into the 2D assets pack again available at brackies.com uh, and under the pawn game, under individual sprites, we have the ball. So let's just drag that on to Unity and release it in the project pane. And now when we select it here, we can see that all of the settings are already set up like we want them to. So now we can just go ahead and drag our ball into the scene view. I'm just going to drag it pretty much in the center here. And uh, what we can do is we can uh, first off add some components. So the first thing we want to add is the Physics 2D Circle Collider. And so we will just scale it down by adjusting the radius to something like 0.2 three that looks pretty good and uh, when we play the game now the ball is just static we want it to actually uh, act in physics space so let's hit add component physics 2d and add a rigid body 2d which will allow us to make it actually jump around so now when we hit play we can see that it falls and it just sits there uh, so basically what we want to do is first off we want it to be set to fixed angle. We are going to kill the angular drag, set that to zero. The gravity we are going to kill that in a sec also, but first off let's set the mass to 0 0.1. Just because we don't really want the mass to have an effect on anything. Uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to go down here in the project pane and we're going to create a physics 2D material and we're going to call this... Uh, ball bounce and uh, what this will do is it will allow us to adjust some properties for how this uh, ball will act uh, in physics space so basically we can kill off its friction so that it won't um, be affected by uh, basically it won't slow down is what it's going to ultimately mean uh, and then we're going to set the bounciness to one uh, so that it will bounce off everything it hits. And now when we hit play, uh, we should... Oh yeah, we need to apply it first. So select the ball, drag on the ball bounce under the material, under the circle collider, and now hit play. And we can see the ball bouncing just beautifully. If you want to know more about collision and rigid bodies and physics materials, you can go ahead and watch uh, the um, mastering collision tutorial I made uh, a while ago. Cool, so what we can do now is we can just uh, turn off the gravity scale, so set that to zero, and uh, I think we are ready to create our ball script. So let's just uh, go ahead and rename. Uh, no, actually, let's just make the script sit on the ball, and uh, then we can handle spawning it through the GM object and uh, yeah, so let's just start out by making a ball script. So let's select the ball, hit new script, and call this ball control. And create an ad. Let's double click it to open it up in Mono Develop. Here it is, and let me zoom in so you can see this better. So we can... No, actually, let's keep the function update because we are just going to rename it. So in the function start, we first off want to um, start the ball. We want it to uh, start uh, traveling in a uh, random direction. So if you have played old school Pong, you will notice that um, once the game starts, it shoots out to a random side. So what we can do now is we can use a random number 
to affect which side it goes goes to. So we can use, for example, random dot range. There are a lot of random things we can uh, call in here. So we can use random dot range, and this will make a uh, float uh, object or a, a float value between the minimum and maximum values you you put in. So if we do like zero and just zero, let's just do zero, zero and one, uh, we can say that if uh, actually let's make this into a variable. Sorry, I'm clouding. So variable and then a random number equals random dot range zero to one. And then we can go in here in an if statement and say if random number is uh, less than or equal to 0 0.5 then we want it to shoot out in one direction so debug.log shoot right and if it's not so else oops debug.log shoot left. So now when we play this, we should see that it randomly chooses a number uh, or a direction to shoot. So right now we've only gotten shoot right, but in a sec, if we keep on playing this, we should get shoot left to appear also. Let's see if we can get shoot left to appear. For some reason this is not working. So if it's less than or equal to 0 0.5, do we need this to be 2? That would be weird. There it was left and right and left and left. Well, it looks like we need this to be 2. Yeah, there's something about that actually. Random that range can <laughs> confuse you sometimes, but okay. It works now, so let's just go with this. It's really not that important. It's just so it doesn't shoot out to the same exact side every time. So in here, we're just going to put uh, rigid body 2D dot add force. And then this needs a vector 2. So a vector 2 is just a variable storing two coordinates, the X and the Y. So we're going to do new vector 2. And inside of this, we are just going to do something like maybe 80 and 10. This is just an estimate. You could make variables for these so you can adjust them inside of Unity. But I think this is going to be just fine. And let's just duplicate the same line down here and then make the 80 to into a minus 80 and the 10 into a minus 10. And of course, you could make uh, even more if statements. You can make a switch uh, so that there are more outcomes. Or you could just use the random that range directly to access the force. But again, it just gets too complicated. We just want this working right. So let's save this and hit play. And we can see that our ball shoots out. So it's acting just how we want it to. And uh, yeah, things are looking great, but we have a problem and that is that the ball is currently very, very predictable because in some Pong variations, if, I, uh, if you move upwards while colliding with the ball, you will change the, um, uh, the direction of the ball just a bit. But right now it doesn't matter which way we are um, moving, the ball will jump the same no matter what and so these patterns uh, that are very easy to predict will uh, start appearing. So I, I think we should go ahead and change that and it's it's pretty much a decision whether or not you want to do it. Uh, but I think it makes it a little more fun. So let's go ahead and do function uh, on collision enter 2D. And this will get called whenever we collide with something uh, It will uh, that is two dimensional, it will get called one time. And what we want to do is in here, we want to pass some uh, variables. So we want to basically store some information about the collision. 
and we could call this the call the call info let's actually call it call info for collider information and uh, it's going to be a type collision 2d remember to put a 2d there or you will get an error cool so what we can do now is we can first off check that we have hit the player so let's do if call info dot collider the one we collide with dot tag is equal to player then we want something to happen so let's just do a debug dot log it's working and then exit out of this and we will go into unity and we will remember this time to select both our players or you can select the prefab uh, in the project pane so this is actually pretty handy because if we were to select let's see our player 2 and then change it, its uh, its tag and hit apply we would also apply the move up and down keys and that's not something we want so instead we can go into the prefab in the project pane and change the values here and they will both automatically update so uh, for the tag we'll select the pre prefab go to tag select player uh, it will automatically be there if not you can go ahead and hit add tag and you can just type it in there and then afterwards select it great so let's hit play now and once it hits our player we get to see it's working in the console so that's just perfect but you uh, might notice that once our ball hits our players they get pushed so uh, to change this we can go ahead and select again our player prefab and we can just bump up the mass quite a bit and this is an easy solution uh, but one thing we would want to do also um, is go under the player controls and we are going to lock in our position uh, we can also go under the uh, con uh, normally uh, when when it comes to rigid bodies you have some constraints as to where you want them to move uh, but it's not in the 2d rigid bodies yet so instead we are going to open up the um, player control script here and then in the function update we simply want to set the um, the x velocity to zero so we just do rigid body 2d dot velocity dot x equals zero and this will mean that our okay so this will mean that our players will stay in place so now when the ball hits they do nothing they move a tiny 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 bit uh, but then they the next frame they will just snap into place again so it really doesn't matter cool uh so where were we got uh our ball is moving and it's colliding and everything is great okay so we want it to be affected by velocity so instead of the it's working statement let's go ahead and type var velocity y or just vel i because this is the name of the variable and this is going to be equal to rigid body 2d dot velocity dot y so i just want to store it as a variable so you can easily access it then we're going to do vel i so the uh, the y velocity of the rigid body of our ball is going to be equal to and uh, here we could just set it directly to the velocity of the player but i didn't really i don't really think that uh, was that great so instead i did this to make a mix out of the two so i mix in the velocity of the ball and mix in the velocity of the player and uh, i think this is working pretty great so what i did was i took half the velocity of the y and plus the collider dot collider uh, well not the collider I mean collider info dot collider dot rigid body 2d dot velocity dot y okay and divide that by three uh, so half the uh, velocity y plus the a third of the uh, velocity of the player uh, I found that to be a pretty great match and now if we hit save 
and go back into Unity, you will notice that we can affect the velocity of the ball by moving up and down. So if I can just get it to work. So if I stay still and don't really move, the ball should slowly cancel out its velocity. So if we can get this to slowly just... Is this working? Actually, I don't think this is working. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and, and quickly turn off the uh, the recording and I'll see you in a second. Okay, so I'm back. I'm sorry for the uh, smaller confusion there. And uh, of course, as always, when you look through code, you uh, suddenly just find something that is insanely stupid. And I did something insanely stupid. So basically what, uh, what I did was I made a new variable. Uh, which I just declared um, as a float value. And then I just changed that. And the rigidbody 2D, that velocity didn't really update. So we basically just changed this value and not the value we actually wanted to change. There are a couple of ways to solve this. The easiest of, of which is just to forget this variable declaration. Copy the rigidbody 2D, that velocity, that y in place of the velocity.y here, and then just delete this. And now everything should be working and we can also delete our debug.log statement. So now when we go ahead and hit play, uh, we should see that if we don't move at all, yeah, the uh, the y movement on, of the ball cancels, uh, cancels out. But if we then uh, give it some momentum, you can see that we can affect the traveling direction. So this is great because it uh, it's more like the modified version of Pong, which I really like. And uh, it makes the uh, game a lot more exciting because you can actually try to score, um, score goals. Cool, so right now you will notice that when we hit the uh, left and right walls, uh, nothing happens. So I guess that's gonna be the objective for no uh, next time. So we're gonna handle scoring. Yay! So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.